Good evening and welcome to Girlfriend Minute. I am Char. And I'm Pascal. How are you this evening? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm okay. <laughs> I know. We can only get our computers to match. I that know. We great. right. We got booted out. So now we're starting over. We're only about seven minutes in. So we'll see how this goes. And uh, we talked about the snow you're getting and how warm it was here and yeah, so we're getting all about of five to seven, and um, <clears throat> uh, and you know it's a mixture, and it's cold as anything over here, and so you know it is what it is. But it's nice to have the first snowfall come down of the year. So uh, we haven't had something like this in a while, so it's nice, nice to look at. Horrible yeah. to drive in and horrible to clean up. <laughs> Well, we were warm and sunny today, as you called me earlier to show me the snow, and I showed you the sun, so it was complete opposites. <laughs> Go figure, right? I mean, com I mean, the other day we were cold, so, you know, we just were on this up and down, big fluctuation, you know, in temps. So um, Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. Well, I like the change in weather. Yes. I do like the change because we're hot for so long. Uh, our strawberries need it for delicious strawberry shortcake. They need to get cold. <laughs> yes, they do. I re you know yeah. you reminded me of something when we were when we lived in Florida. I was a little kid at the time. I forget exactly how old I was, but I remember going and picking for strawberries. Did you? So and I, I you know I'm a little jealous. I have lived here born raised here and I've never been to the strawberry festival I've never been strawberry picking really you should go it's a lot of fun I, that was a memorable moment yeah I've never been and then you, you try to find someone to go and they don't necessarily well no I've been it's like okay well I'm not I'm trying to find someone to go <laughs> <laughs> well hopefully somebody will go with you if I don't go with you by the time I get there so yeah yeah, I'm, wait, I'm waiting patiently. I know, I know, I know. You are. You've been such a good girl, so. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, so it would be awesome. Yes. There yeah. would be adventures. There oh, would my be, God, lots of adventures. There would be adventures. I think us going to a mall together would be an adventure. <laughs> right, right, for sure. You know. But Heck yeah, yeah, it would be fun. Yeah. yeah. How was your week? My week was okay. I took a day off. I had a little longer weekend last weekend and going back to work on Wednesday was difficult as it always proves to be when you go back to work after a long weekend and, um, you know, not nothing too exciting. It was uh, a decent week at work. It was kind of just steady and not overwhelming because it's still quiet. The holidays, people are getting back. Kids are out of school still, so people are vacationing. So it's kind of nice to have a little bit of time to get caught up on some things. How was your week? Uh, my week was pretty good. Um, it was a little bit slow, you know, coming out of uh, the holidays and, and the New Year's. Um, but we also have the farm show here going on. So uh, usually that's like a big, huge event here in Pennsylvania, and a lot of people actually go and visit there, and they have like animals, and um, they have like uh, chicken eggs that are like developing into peeps and, you know, little baby chicks and stuff like that. So a lot of the kids go, a lot of families go. Um, they also have a really, really good milkshakes over there at the time because Hershey Ooh. gets involved. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. So it, it was yeah. a little bit slow, but um, yesterday was a busy day at the restaurant. Um, but today, obviously, it's not because it snowed and everything. So. So you yeah. got to make your escape a little early. Slightly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> We've been battling the computer for an hour. Oh my gosh, yes. You know, so yeah, now we're up and good running. Hour. Knock on wood, we're up and running. Yes. Hopefully we'll oh. stay like that so it doesn't get cut off. So, and it's some exciting news. Something new that we are going to experience or have or do is um, the 17th. Our mutual friend is coming on. Yes, that's exciting. I can't wait. Yeah. And so Crystal um, 
is like the, our health guru. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so she's going to come on and uh, she has a topic picked out and she's been working on it and, um, and we're going to talk. Yes, and hopefully we won't have any computer issues at that time. So we're going to well, try and, and yeah. escape those by doing a little bit of um, uh, trial and error prior to. So Yeah, yeah. So um, I guess we are, are recording a little earlier because we're recording during the week with her and we all have to work and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. So, but that'll be fun. Something new. Yeah, something new and different and new topics different than what we normally talk about. So that's, that's going to be interesting. Yes, it will be. So um, today's topic, tonight's topic, I don't know what time is it? It is 1130 on the nose. Uh, What is something all women want in a relationship, but never ask for? So I kind of asked that question and it was, it was kind of left to be interpreted whatever way you wanted. Some people took it as materialistic things and some people took it as something a little more intimate, more personal. Mm -hmm. So what what would you, what would yours be? (laughs) Is it more intimate or is it more personal? (laughs) Well, it's, uh, it's a long list. (laughs) I've learned, (laughs) learned a lot over the years. So, um, I don't even know how to start that. Well, I mean, I'm I'm not married, so I don't know the whole dynamics, you know, between that. Um, so I can't really speak on that topic, you know. Well, for for me and the things I have learned, um, I have this vision that I've never ever had in my life. I've had the vision, but mm-hmm. nothing's ever come true. Okay. So for me, it's not really materialistic. Um, as far as the materialistic end of things, that would be maintaining the house, having pride in where you live, that type of thing. The basics, nothing outlandish, you know, nothing right. like that. On the more personal side, it's being on the same page. Yes. And pretty much you have to be on the same page in a lot of things, the big things. You do. Uh, the money. The raising of the children, the maintaining of things, the prioritizing of certain things, you know, and all of those go off into many other branches and go really deep. So um, for me, I always envisioned having this like, you know, they call it the Hollywood powerhouse couple. Mm -hmm. And of course, you only see what you see on TV and stuff, but some people have this relationship where it's okay to talk and have a communication and people express their thoughts and feelings without being offended or taking it so right, personal it the that, wrong way. and then nothing ever gets fixed and years and years go by and nothing ever gets fixed and it just gets worse and worse and worse. And if you have a thought, feeling or opinion on how something should be handled, you know, I guess mostly for me, it's just recognition for having thoughts, feelings and opinions and that they matter. Right. Yeah, this is true. You know. Yeah, that's very important in a relationship. I mean, you need those things. If you don't have those things, it's very hard, you know, to have communication with that other person, too. That would be one of my things that I would ask for. It's probably proper communication. Yes, and it is. It, it seems so simple, but mm-mm, no, honey, it is not. It, it is not um, simple at all. It's never been for me. Um, sometimes I just kind of say it because if I sugarcoat too much, it gets twisted and turned into something else or it's not understood the way I want it to be understood for clear communication. And then if I'm too blunt, then I'm over speaking my mind and... Huh. And it still doesn't get communicated. And it still doesn't get communicated (laughs) properly and nothing is ever resolved. Yes. And it's like just taking your head and banging it on the wall. Oh my gosh. Yes. I understand that totally. Totally. I mean, I've had, you know, one of my relationships, the last relationship that I have is exactly the same thing. And, um, 
Uh, I want to say some of it has to do with um, not knowing what I'm talking about because not completely understanding in the English language because you know I've been here and I've brought been brought up here so I pretty much know logistics of the English language you know if somebody gives me a slang word I kind of know how to deal with it so yeah. if I'm I'm saying something like that to the relationship that I have or I had rather um, it's like you know, you're looking at him and he's not understanding it. So he's like taking it the wrong way instead of telling me, listen, I don't really understand this. Yeah. You know, can you explain it to me? Like, what do you mean by that? No, quickly to get angered and quickly to jump to a conclusion for something that I didn't even mean to go that way. Right. You know? Yeah. Well, yeah. and that happens if you sugarcoat and you're trying to be, Overly nice because you're sensitive. You don't want to hurt someone's feelings, but yet your feelings are hurt because they don't ever understand you. I can say yes. a sentence, make a statement, and two seconds later, it'd be completely twisted. I'm like, wait, that is not what I just said. Right. It's, it has happened multiple times. And then because I said that's not what I said, it becomes a bigger issue. Right. right. But I know what I said. <laughs> I know. And I, I know me and I know how I feel. So, yeah, it's... uh. It's exhausting. And so when you stop trying to communicate, then you know that person has truly given up. Yeah, definitely. Because sometimes it's just more work than it's worth and nothing ever gets resolved. Oh, you're absolutely right. You know, they don't ever remember this. They didn't say that. That's not what they meant. They didn't, you know, and it's just always excuses. And, um, when you're trying to communicate and be clear because of how things get twisted and just from previous experiences, um, it's just frustrating. It's just it frustrating. Is. Validation for thoughts and feelings, you know, just want to be heard, <laughs> yeah. understood. Yeah. Um, this actually had a ton of responses. Um, I've kind of been branching out and posting in places. So, Someone put, honestly, if I want something, I'll ask for it. I am not going to suffer in silence. So okay. so that's more materialistic kind of. Uh, I kind of took it that way, you know, because, I mean, I guess if you. Or saying, it could, I mean, you could it, could it, be, it, could it could be. It could be either way. Ways. Yeah. yeah. Um, effort, act like you care. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know. Uh, space. Sometimes you just need space to unwind, take a break from everything, and you just need space. Yes. Um, so if the person is over obsessive with you and had been for years, sometimes you're like, dude, just need some space. <laughs> you know? Let me breathe. Give me uh, a second. Some, all right. You know, someone posted fear of asking will result in a less than desirable relationship. Well, that is so true. Depending on your relationship and how far things have gone one way and you decide and discover, it becomes easier to say nothing. Oh, yes. I've been there. Mm -hmm. I've been there because um, it's like he had to always told me that I don't like somebody asking me too many questions. I feel like they are intruding on my life. And I'm like, well... I'm supposed to be part of your life. Like, so how am I intruding on your life if I'm part of your life? And then he reverts around to say, oh, I fully trust you and you're the only person in my life and and um, uh, you're here in my heart and I care about you. But it's like going around the bush. Yeah. Basically, and not telling me exactly what it is. And so I chose after he after I would say, can I ask you a question or can we talk or whatever like that? And he would be like, oh, well, you know, I'm really sick and tired of questions. So then I shut up. Yeah. Well, that and it's like, what are you hiding? See, and that's what I mean. And and like, why? You know, why? Just just it's and it's not questions that are meant to open up a fight or open no. up 
No, it's just a question that I just would like to get an answer for. Well, and that's it, and then we move on. It's basic communication. Even you yeah. and I asking each other questions. It's basic communication. It is. All it is. relationships have a basic baseline communication. You have to talk to have a relationship on any level. No. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> you know. Do you yeah, really? Yeah. <laughs> The flashcards, you know, well, some seem to think you don't. So I don't know. Yeah. Apparently yours didn't think so. And And even the ones that like I dated, like I tried to communicate with them, you know, and I would talk, but I got bored of listening to myself talk. So I'm like, geez, like, come on. It's, it gets to be boring hearing yourself. Yeah, you just, you know, you know, I could talk to myself alone. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need you in my life to talk, right? talk to myself. <laughs> right. I could do it by myself. <laughs> <laughs> like I have been. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, someone put to not end up being his mother. Well, I think that's a oh, huge yeah. one for many. Yes. That's a good one, actually, because a lot of them think that that's why they have relationships is for that person to be that mother figure. And I mean, life. do they really think that or is it just automatic? Like, do they just expect it because the mother and the time they grew up? I don't know, know really. I don't know. To me, I it's I think they think that's to me, but it could be automatic, too. I don't know for some. I guess every guy is different, so. Yeah, when I ask this question, some people put all women are not the same. I want you to know I'm aware of that. <laughs> well, obviously, if we were all the same, like. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I, so I understand that everyone's wants and needs and desires are different <laughs> than mine. I get it, you know, so. Yeah, but yeah. we also have a lot to relate to as well. We do have a lot to relate to as women yeah. and, and stuff. So that's why the question, when I put it out there, I, you know, I got a few answers and I was, I was being polite because my sarcasm wants to kick in. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mine would have kicked in. Like, what the hell are you talking about? I don't even understand this No, question. we're all different? Really? <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> No, I'm it's, so sorry. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Not being very nice. No, it's okay. I, I mean, that's that's obviously all women are different. We all have our different. Everyone is different. Right. Men, In our women, relationship. Everybody. Correct. Yeah. So it was just kind of a question to kind of prompt conversation and see what people have learned over the years, what they may be doing. But if, <laughs> if you realize. Some of the ones you have already mentioned, we've all had in common. So, oh yeah, I mean they're basics. I think for human relationships, there, yeah. there's basics. You know, there's you know some people are just like I'm happy if the bills are just paid and you know they talk and I I get that, I get that. But for more adventurous people, everyone's yeah. different. Yeah, <laughs> just saying. I am. Uh, a faithful partner who puts them first. Yes, that's one of mine. I I'll, I will definitely agree with that one hundred percent. A lot of times, it's just someone to listen to them, solve the problem they're having, sort of person. So someone who is willing to meet you halfway and have that communication and not be a big you know, fight or something ridiculous, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, just something ridiculous, someone to help solve the problem instead of making it worse. Right. Or absolutely doing nothing about it, which I guess would make it worse, but. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if they're doing nothing, that means they're not listening either. So. Yep. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we just need to vent and that, and I, I totally agree with this one. Some, sometimes you just need to vent that you're not looking for suggestions or opinions on how to solve the problem. Right. Whether you just had a bad day at work and you're just kind of venting about events and the people involved in them or whatever. It's just venting. Yeah. Letting off some steam. So not always do we 
want or are we asking for your advice on what you would do to solve the problem? Again, you know, I work in a small area full of women and how we solve problems is going to be different how a small group of men is going to solve problems anyways. Absolutely. Absolutely. But at least you have that person next to you that is willing to assist in some type of a way. Yeah. Or at least make a few suggestions. But sometimes you just want to vent. Yeah. You just want to talk, you know, and just let off some steam and you already have an idea of what you're going to do or how you're going to handle it or if it's just a done deal and you move on. So. Yeah. And that's funny because I've said that a couple of times, you know, where I was talking and I just having a bad day and I just was talking to him and stuff. And and he's like, well, you know what? I said, no, listen, I'm just talking. OK, I'm just talking. Yeah. I need to get it off my chest. Yeah. Sometimes we just talk. Yes, we do. You men know it. <laughs> <laughs> and then sometimes we don't talk and then you'll have to wonder why. <laughs> Sleep with one eye open. Exactly. <laughs> Wondering why. Yes. Um, and this one I can really relate to. For me, it's guilt. I don't ask for anything because I feel guilty for it. I have raised three sons, all adults now. I have hardly worked outside the home to bring monetary value into our home. I just cook and clean. It feels selfish of me when I haven't contributed to our finances. Oh, I can say so much about that. Um, I guess maybe I'm just a more worldly type of a woman where she should not feel guilty about asking for anything. I mean, for Christ's sake, she raised three kids and men to boot. Okay. Plus took care of the house, cleaned, did laundry, cooked. Mm -hmm. did everything that she was expected to. Why would you feel guilty to ask for anything, even if you don't make monetary value in the house? Well, I think it's the way we're programmed and raised as, as young girls, because you have to realize the generation our parents were. Yeah. It just becomes automatic. It it's, does. It does for a lot, you know, because I'm, I know I have spent many years feeling like that. Yeah. And now I make my own money. And mm -hmm. to not be a pain because I go and do petties once every three weeks and I get my hair done once every four weeks and all that. I pay for all that myself. I pay my truck payment. I pay for my fuel. I pay for the maintenance on my vehicle. I need clothes. I buy them myself. I don't ask for anything unless I'm absolutely desperate. See, so I totally can relate to that. I right. totally can relate to that. I so I can give you both experiences, okay? So I was brought up on the fact that the woman, okay, like you said, stays home, cooks and cleans, raises the kids, and does all that womanly stuff, I guess, that she's supposed to do. <laughs> Correct, okay? right? And the man goes and works and then comes home and brings home, you know, what he's supposed to bring home and takes care of the household finances and things like that. Now, I was brought up like that, but I don't think like that. That's I, a little different than me. I was, nothing like that was really instilled in me. I watched my parents because of the dynamics of my household with him being the alcoholic and he was in absolute control. And I mean absolute control. If mm -hmm. she needed grocery money, he gave a certain amount of money cash to her and that's what she got for groceries. Mm-hmm. If someone needed something, I needed something for school or something, he gave that amount of cash. And that was it. There was no bank account, by the way, I found out later in life. He paid everything cash like that to her. There wow. was no bank account. You know, I don't know how everything else was handled. You know, back then you had checks, but you had to have a bank account. So I don't know if they just went and she paid cash for every bill or whatnot. I, I don't know the specifics of that, but I do know. She needed gas money. She was given gas money. She did not have an allowance of any kind or, mm -hmm. or anything like that. And she did not go shop for herself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it was everything was very controlled by him. So then when she finally left and she was trying to get custody of me and she worked three jobs to prove to the courts she could support me and stuff, I knew money was tight. I didn't ask for anything that I didn't right. absolutely have to have. 
you know, I, I, you know, because she was working so hard. I, I started doing my laundry when I was 10. I would do her laundry just so she wouldn't have to come home and do laundry on top of working right. three jobs. Right. You know, I can cook myself a meal at age 10. And I did. I mean, it, it just it needed to be done. I didn't think anything of it. I think, think I'm some deprived child. I was grateful not to be in his house anymore. Right. So the programming started when I started watching them mm -hmm. and started to understand what was happening. And then because money was so tight. I just didn't ask for things. I didn't want to put stress on her. Right. And, you know, and make things, you know, I was just, like I said, grateful for not being in his house. And so it just, it has always been embedded in me. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And so I work full time now. Now I did stay home for 12 years, but now I, I work full time mm -hmm. and I pay my own bills. Yeah, and that's great. That's you good. Know. But at the same time, like in the in the Middle Eastern culture, I'll give you a view of, of my side. Um, even till now, like when some people get married, the woman doesn't really go outside of the um, household to go to work. Um, and I'm not talking about just Lebanese people. I'm just talking about Middle Eastern in Eastern general. People. Yeah, Middle Eastern people in general. So, um, and then, of course, different religions play a different role in it. Um, more Christians are a little bit more, uh, from what I experience now, I'm not saying that everybody, so don't take it the wrong way. <laughs> right. Um, only from my experience and um, a lot of Lebanese people uh, work together to provide a family home for their kids, okay? A lot of Muslim people, and that's Lebanese Christians, but a lot of Muslim people tend to get married and the woman stays home and she does the homely things while the man goes out and work. I believe they do give them an allowance, but they can pretty much ask for whatever they want and the man will get, go ahead and give it to them. Unless they have that certain communication between each other to say, you know, like, um, I don't have the money right now. Can you wait a yeah. week or can you this or can you that? So it's it's a little bit different um, dynamics when it comes to the different religions and the different cultures. But yeah. overall, I mean, I was I was like you. I was brought up. I didn't really ask my parents for anything um, because I just knew that they didn't really have a lot of money so I didn't really ask uh, the only ever things that we got and we have spoken about this before is like during the holidays and Christmas time and Easter time and the major things where they would get us new things and mainly yeah. it was clothes and shoes yeah um, but yeah I mean for me I don't think she should feel guilty about it I mean well, her her and I went back and forth on this yeah. and I told her that I said it is a job to raise three children it is i mean she's working he's he's not staying home doing it <laughs> you know exactly how hands-on was he when he was home you know stuff like that come into play but i i told her by no means should you should you feel guilty you not know you, you shouldn't feel guilty you you're no, you're she contributed. You put in your time into the relationship as well he wanted a family you helped provide that you took care of the family um you know and it's sacrifice it is it's stuff. a lot of sacrifice on her behalf you know yeah. and she contributed to the home too as well no not in a monetary value but in everything else yeah you know and I told her I said maybe you should go get yourself a part-time job maybe that'll help a little she says I might there you go because she's still home yeah. cleaning and cooking his meals okay and then there's nothing wrong with that that's there's fine, nothing but... wrong with that but I think she's looking for a little bit more and I was just like you know as someone who wants Who's different you? things yeah. go get your more well exactly and she's and he's probably so used to the way they live that right now when the kids are out of the home and everybody's doing their own thing they don't know how to be with each other. They don't know how to be with each other. She probably doesn't know how to communicate with him 
to yeah, start that so conversation. Mm-hmm. And he probably just thinks, hey, she's not complaining. She's happy. Right. Because right. that's typically what happens. Yeah. If you're not complaining, you're happy. Well, no. Yeah. If I say anything and you consider it complaining, then I don't want to be told I'm always complaining because I said something. Either. Right. Don't always assume. <laughs> yeah. Don't assume. So, yeah. So, you know, I think anyways, I uh, she plans on staying on touch in touch with me, but she. Um, I hope she finds what she's looking for and she. I hope so, too. I hope she gets out there and finds out she what goes, life is about. Yeah, and gets herself a petty or something and treats herself. <laughs> you Absolutely. Know? You deserve it, honey. You deserve it. Yes. 100%. But I totally related to that comment because I've I've done the same exact thing. Yeah. Done the same exact thing. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, someone and there's and again, we're, I think we're programmed that way a little bit. So, yeah. You know, becomes easy, becomes easy. So um, physical intimacy. Oh, that's a big one, too. That that goes around with money. (laughs) (laughs) Leave it on the bedside table. (laughs) Just Not like that. Not like that. (laughs) I went the wrong way with it. Well, you know, whatever it takes. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> hey, if, if she wants it left on the bedside table, go for it. Or, right. or maybe he does. I don't know. I don't know. Go for it. <laughs> no, but yeah, that's that goes, you know, that's like one of the top two relationship uh, conversations or things to ask for. For sure. Well, I think as relationships go on, I mean, that becomes work, too. Oh, yeah. You have to maintain it, you know, you and you have to not be afraid to ask for it or ask what do you need for this to happen more or, you know, yeah, something. The, it's true. Yeah, you should open up, you know, about those kinds of things, um, especially like sexuality. Um, some women are always so quiet about telling the guy what they actually want. Um, in that, you know, scenario. Um, and I mean, I was like that, you know, for a little bit, like I was more quiet, just like, okay, this is how it's supposed to be. We're just going to leave it like that, you know? But as I got older, I found out that, no, I'm going to ask for what I want because it makes me feel better. Yeah. You know? So yeah, I'm going to say, do this or do that, or no, don't do that. I don't like that. You know? Things like right. that. So yeah. yeah. It's all about that communication. Absolutely. You cannot be afraid to talk. No. Uh, and then the, the next one, of course, is the intimacy, protection, love, affection. Yes. You know. Yeah, a lot of men f- don't show affection and love. Um, the ones that I met anyway. They don't. What happened to people walking around the malls holding hands? And I mean, not the ones that are 80 or 90. I'm talking younger. <laughs> I was going to say, well, they still do that, but they're walking <laughs> black. Around, yeah, the around the mall. I've seen them. Yes. yes. <laughs> you know, what happened to just grabbing someone and hugging them? I like a good hug. Me too. Me too. I yeah. really do. Just yeah. once in a while, I like somebody to just come and squeeze me, you know? Yep. Like yep. even, even it's it's that warmth, it's that time that you took out just to kind of cuddle with me just for a second. It's know? human connection. Yeah, it is. And that's very yeah. important. Touch it is, is very one important. of the senses. It's very important. Very it important is. for human yeah. beings. Yeah. Unless they're gross and you're just like, Why are you touching me? <laughs> well yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Get away from me. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Um, someone posted depth. Depth. I don't know. I would assume that. I would assume meaningful conversations and meaningful everything. Just depth to it. Not 
fake, mm-hmm. not shallow, not opposite. Probably just, opening, <laughs> yeah. just opening up, I guess, to each other. I, yeah, you know, something not so superficial in the sense that, you know, I think some people think all relationships are disposable. Yeah, I think so. You're right. I, I know some men that definitely do. Mm-hmm. You know, which makes the women they're involved with. Well, it affects them. It makes them sad, I'm sure. I'm sure. I think that would be sad. I would you feel sad that way. Because, you know, for me, if it was me, I, when I'm invested that way, I'm invested, you know. Same, same here. If I'm if I'm in a relationship with somebody and I care about that person to a certain degree, like I am completely and 100 percent invested in that person. And I would hope that they would be able to open up to me to talk about how they're feeling or what's going on in their life or, you know, just family extended relatives, you know, things like just like normal. I know I hate it's normal conversation, normal conversation. Uh-huh. And I have how was your that. day? How are you doing? Yeah, exactly. You know, checking in on you. Yes, the, that little text message hi means yeah. the world. Exactly. It means you thought of that person. Exactly. You exactly. know, so it it means the world. Uh, someone posted some sensuality. Yeah. You know, um, I don't know if that comes with, I guess it depends on how the relationship is going as a whole. Yeah, I agree with that one. You know, I am, um, yeah, so I don't know. What are some others? Well, I'm sitting here scrolling and uh, a guy posted, I don't know if there's something I wanted out of a relationship that I feel like I'm not getting. I'd probably just tell her that so we can work it out. Yeah. Well, you would hope so. You know. Yeah. He's he's one of many. So, I mean, I don't, he's one out of many, I should say, that probably knows how to talk. So, yeah. So here's yeah. an interesting one. Mm-hmm. He's pretty blunt. So here we go. Oh. A beautiful, a beautiful partner. You see, if they're ugly as f, that will make. That's what makes um, all my relationships end. Well, why would you get involved with someone that you thought was ugly to begin with? <laughs> That's going to make your relationship. End. But ugly how? Like superficially ugly or ugly inside or well, what? Well, let me hear. I'm going on. Oh, you're you, still going. Okay. <laughs> I, but, you know, that's what makes my relationships end. I'm like, why would you start them? Anyways, uh, yeah. you all say stuff like personality, be a listener, make an effort, care about, but really no. So it is superficial. Oh, Wow. No, that's crazy. So what I wanted to say to him was, you single. <laughs> he, and he probably is. Probably is, yes, <laughs> which is 100%. why I would ask that. would be nothing yeah. but sarcasm. Those are extra stuff. It's nice to have those. But those qualities, in my experience, need to be added to a nice-looking person. Oh, if you're what, not, the heck, what the heck does he look like? Well, there's no picture. I can't tell is you. If you're GP? not a... If you are not a nice looking person, every single good trait can be interpreted as rudeness or being annoying. Okay, well, to be honest. If you're not a nice looking person, every trait can be interpreted as rudeness or annoying. Yeah, I don't. I think he's confused. I don't think he knows. I know this will get downvoted. (laughs) <clears throat> but my point is that looks are always what stands and makes a relationship work. Looks plus attitude and skills are better, but no amount of effort, skills, attitude can overcome a bad looking physique or face. So at this point, I just want a person that really stays in my life, even if I'm an orc. <laughs> 
Not, no, not really. Ugliness is a thing. And there you go. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's so many things I want to say right now. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, first of all, <laughs> you're ugly just for saying that. And I don't even know what you look like. Correct. Okay. That's number one. Number two, your physical and your physique is going to go bye-bye when you get old. So nobody cares. Nobody fucking cares. Okay? <laughs> yeah. So I don't know how old you are, but grow the fuck up because you're never going to have anybody in your life if you're going to be superficial and all you see is nothing well, but beauty. He's he states that his relationships end because of an ugly person. So while well, that doesn't make any sense, why would you get involved with someone that was ugly to begin with just to end it? Basically, is kind of what you're saying. No, oh, honey, his relationship ends because he turns into an ugly person. Oh, I know who he God is. God only know. knows what he says to them if they don't look a certain way that he wants them to look. Oh, I know what kind of person he is that posts, you know, something like this is, you know, he's arrogant. To yeah, say the least. Up. And that's the polite w word I can use right now. That's the only one I've got. <laughs> that's the only polite word I've got. But yeah, I mean. That's rude. That's very rude. I'm sorry. But there are there are people like that in the world. There are women in the world like that as well. Oh, there who, are. Yeah. Who think they walk on water. They do. Yes, they do. Those are called, um, what are they called? Oh, yeah. Gold diggers. <laughs> You know what? It Money's nice. You want to be able to have adventures. You want to know the bills are paid. I'm all for it. But if you don't make me laugh and don't make me smile. Then what's what's the point? I just can't. For any amount of money, lay there and take that abuse. Sorry. <laughs> That's blunt and honest for you. No, I mean, exactly. <laughs> like, you have to make my mind go. Yeah. Like, I have to be able to sit and have a conversation with you that is meaningful. Not to look at you and say, oh, you're so gorgeous. Oh, my God. Yeah. You're beautiful. See? Look at your yeah. body. You got yeah. a six pack. You got this. You got, I don't really care about that. Like, I'm not saying he has to be 500,000 pounds. Okay? No, but. No. It, yeah, no, I get it. I do. But somebody you know. can be more attractive to me if they have a good just mind a, a good a good soul a good mind and a, a good, good soul yes mm -hmm. and a good soul exactly a good heart a good soul uh someone posted i think a lot of women are socialized to not ask and i think that goes back to the yeah what you we always do about. what's expected i've always done what's expected of me um for yeah. my family and everybody um it's not necessarily explicit but we learn growing up not to be selfish not to be a nag not to be needy a princess or any number of things and a lot of women who do ask end up frustrated by partners who still don't show up or who show up for just long enough to make it feel like there's been a change before sliding back into old patterns. Well, if that isn't the truth. So yeah. they just get used to get going without. And as silly as this might sound, sometimes you just straight up don't realize just how much you're denying your own needs and wants. And that's true. Yes. You know, but when you start to watch other people around you have things and they can be materialistic things or they can be a fantastic relationship, you start to be like, well, damn. Yeah, exactly. Um, what am I missing? What am I missing? She went on to say, I was in a very long term relationship that I was th thought was good up until maybe last year or two. I would have told you we had a very healthy communication. It was only after things fell apart that I began to realize just how badly I had gotten into a pattern of ignoring my own needs because I didn't want to make my partner feel bad. He was re overreactive to criticism. Not in a way where we get into fights, but in a way where he'd spiral into feeling like a piece of garbage and then I'd end up being the one to comfort him. And yes, I am realizing on the other side just how toxic all of that was. I didn't want to make him feel bad, so I picked my battles to a point where there just were no battles. Yeah, you get lost. She just shut up. Yeah, exactly. Because the, what it's easier. It's, it it's easier. It's easier. It is totally easier.
And she kind of lost herself. You, know? you do. Yeah. You, to- you do. And people sit there and say, oh, that's so cliche. That's like in a movie. You've been talking to a doctor or psychiatrist. Or- no, you, you really do. Yeah. We, we, everyone goes through changes from birth on. You grow and you change. And then for women, having a relationship, getting married, then having children, not only is that an emotional change, that's a physical change as well. Yes. All, all at once. And then it's, you know, the rest of your life changed because you have these children that it doesn't matter that my daughter doesn't live here. I worry about her and those babies every day. Of course. Of course. It, it will not change until I die. Yeah, no. And it's never, never going to change. You're absolutely right. And, nice, and yes, they I don't... do worry about my son, too. I don't even think I'm leaving the boy out. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just different. Well, and they has... don't take that in consideration. You yeah. know, they don't they don't realize how much we have to handle and we have to hold you know they think it's just okay well she's a tough cookie or she's good or or she like you said she's not complaining so she must be okay but did you ask no did you ask if I was okay yeah yeah you didn't no you know for me I just handle things I've always handled things and I think again and I hate bringing up my childhood, but it, it is. I just handled it. Everyone's like, how did you go through that? I don't know. I just did. Yeah. There, there was no plan. I was nine years old. I had no plan. <laughs> you know, right. I just, I had to handle it. I had to cope. I had to get through. Right. You had no option. I had no option. I was not dealt that hand. I was dealt that hand. I was not, it wasn't by my choice. So I had no option. I, you know, had to get through. So it is what it is, you know, and sometimes you just get through and I'm used to doing that. Yeah. Even to this day, I was just going to do it, whatever, you know. So this is on a lighter side. I don't know about all women. Well, of course you don't. Um, But (laughs) I like I like boyfriend hoodies. I don't want to ask for it, though. I just keep stealing it and wearing it in front of him and being cheeky about not giving it back. (laughs) Oh, that's cute. And that's why I said that is sweet. (laughs) Yeah, that's cute. I like that. Then someone put my ex refused to return my beloved hoodie and 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 posted a teary eyed emoji. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and this goes to us. Honestly, unexpected hugs are the best. Isn't that the truth? Absolutely. I hugs I it. I don't need to ask for or initiate. Immediately brighten my day. It's such a little thing, but it shows you still want. To to hold me close. I don't care much for material things. I just need bear hugs. And it's not the same when you have to ask for it. And nothing is the same when it's thoughtful. If you have to ask for it, and that can be an apology and all that, it's not sincere. No, it's not. And I've had that also too. Like it's sometimes when um, my previous relationship, like he, he didn't show too much affection when we were around people. Okay. Which I understand that because we're both um, from Middle Eastern countries, so we were taught, okay, not to do that in front of people. Okay, fine. Whatever it is, um, we're on the same page on that, so I'm okay with that. But then when we're by ourselves, it's like, you know, if I say goodbye to him or whatever, he'll give me, like, this side hug. Well, what the fuck is the side hug? Like, am <laughs> I your friend? Am I your pal? Am I your what? Is that like the air hug? The air hug. Yes. <laughs> My daughter used to do it to me when she was little, like at school or something. Yes. Yeah. You get an air hug from a way yeah. over here. <laughs> right. And that's how I took it as. And like, and then I asked him, like, how about you give me a real hug? But she's right. It's not the same. No. It's if you have to ask for anything, it's just not the same. It's not sincere. Yeah. It's not like they just looked at you and thought, I'm just going to hug you. Right. Right. And we're talking about hugs, asking about hugs, not asking about other things. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And then someone posted, it's kind of generic, but in my experience, essentially all women want men to be strong. And that is true. While women, I think, like to be independent, we still want the man who can come along and take charge of things. Yes. And kind of sweep us off our feet a little bit. Um, they put strength has many forms. Um, and one is one thing 
And this is one thing they can't really ask for at the point she's bringing it up verbally. She probably has lost respect for you, which means the whole relationship is effed. Um, that doesn't mean railroading her, but it means taking initiative and being assertive and generally having things handled. It's not about not showing weakness. It's not about being weak in the first place. And then they went on to say, <laughs> I didn't read this all the way through prior. Oh God. It must be a man who posted this. I'm just, well, at this moment, at this next sentence, I'm going to say that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Sorry, no offense to anyone. Um, also, oral sex. Some women will ask, and a few don't like it, but in general, it's very good advice to just get good at it and be generous with it. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what they wrote. Wow. Well, hey, it's, okay. it's honest, I guess, right? Okay. Well, I was just going to say that. If they're being honest, then I think it should be. Because prior honest. to that little blurb at the end, it was good. <laughs> yeah, and that should work on the man's side, too. He should learn how to do that, and he should get good at it. So we can we can play both sides on that too as well. You think women don't want that? Women <laughs> do want that. Okay, maybe not all the time like men do, but women do want that too. So yeah, get good at it, men. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I know we're not trying to go there, but I'm just saying. No, it's just as talking funny about I, what I, they're I doing. Didn't. I didn't read the whole thing prior, and I just got to that last part. I was like, "Oh, <laughs> yeah." So yeah, it works. It works on both genders, and so um, yeah, men get good at it because it's coming to you. So, right. Um, someone posted they like surprises. I usually just ask, even when I want something as a surprise, I'd say, "Hey, I like surprises, so please surprise me often." Handmade gifts, surprise snacks, surprise plans, surprise co-op games just surprise me one thing i struggle with asking for though is effort it's hard to explain why forgetting that what about our anniversary and planning something last second is upsetting and definitely not the same as planning ahead of time usually my partners would say well i did make the effort and i'll tell and told you i'll make a plan and it's just impossible to communicate how different that is from just planning it to someone that wouldn't necessarily care about the intent as long as you do what they want. Yeah, effort does play a big role in it as well. It does. Um, yeah, they have to put in the effort to be able to, it works both sides though, both genders do as well. Each person has to put in their own effort in some kind of way. Yeah, and I understand when she, you know, they're saying like, birthdays or anniversaries or something is forgotten sure. it's you know yeah i get it yeah, uh self-sufficient well acknowledge it <laughs> yeah exactly. there's that there's just yeah baby baby steps <laughs> yes uh self-sufficiency in a relationship um now where we are independently responsible for our impact on the home and the family we help each other when needed but it's not expected and it helps that we aren't taking on the chores of the other my theory is if you live here welcome <laughs> contribute contribute you yes. put something down pick it up put it away you take something out put it back you can vacuum yes you can mop yeah you open the door close the door would I expect it all the time? No. You want to do your own laundry? That's fine. You want to do all the laundry? That's fine that day. You know, I, you know, whatever. But if you live here, you're helping out. <laughs> well, yeah, of course. No, I agree. Because with that. if I'm doing it all, I just rather live alone. Yeah, there's no point then. And then I would have less to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. exactly. See where my train of thought goes. I yes. just have less to do. But it's just me. I feel you. I feel you on that one. You know. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah. And I've said it more than once out loud. <laughs> There's communication. Nobody's listening. <laughs> no, they. No one listens. Um, you know, no one listens. But uh, that was the gist of gist of it all. Um, 
No, that was know? a very good topic. This, um, and I'm glad to to know that um, there was a lot of people that actually commented, and so that's that was great. Yeah, it um, it was good to have a lot of feedback from different people. Yes. And, you know, new perspective, fresh ideas and thoughts, um, keep it exciting. And it's interesting. You know, humans are interesting. We're interesting people, not yeah. just men or not just women to the other, to men, you know, we're just all interesting. So, yes. you know, it was nice yes. to have a bigger variety of um, answers. And some elaborate from. more than others. Some were paragraphs, a couple of paragraphs. Um, one that I didn't read the full thing, but I pulled a full, few things out and already read was several paragraphs, five, six. Um, wow. Yeah, paragraphs long. And, um, you yeah. know, it's Thanks, it's all guys. good. It's all good information. It's all good information. This is how we. Well, not only are we communicating, <laughs> this is how we learn. <laughs> And listen, and From then, each other, you know, yeah. yeah, and then when something's happening, we can think, huh. Yeah, well, and then you know what? Sometimes maybe something might have gone through somebody's life in a different way, but at least they can be able to relate to you and maybe offer some advice on how to, you know, better your situation. Um, so... Uh, like you said, learning is, is the key. That's why, you know, as women, we should stick together and and uh, talk to each other about things like that, you know, instead of putting yeah. each other down sometimes. Well, you know, and that's the thing. When you ask some of these questions um, online, you always have someone who wants to be the smart aleck. Of course. Um, and when I type ladies and I have men friends I know who decide they're going to answer and not only do they answer, but they're sarcastic or they're being smart asses. I just delete, delete, delete. Yeah. And, uh, I'm just waiting for one of them to message me and go, why'd you delete that? Well, I'm like, right. well, first of all, apparently you can't read cause it says ladies <laughs> <laughs> start there. Um, I had one guy, the one guy who randomly messages me, that's kind of a creepo. Um, immediately, wanted to know what was going on in my world that I'm posting all these questions. And I just want you to know, he literally just lost his son, like right before Christmas oh, and man. I'm posting questions and he immediately responds where you just really need to be worrying about like your son's funeral arrangements and stuff. Don't be, you know, and he's trying to message me when I've told him, just leave me alone. And, um, uh, and he goes, well, I'm assuming if you don't have any girl groups. And I was like, dude, you don't know what I have. Why are you talking to me? <laughs> yeah, I have, I have multiple I girl groups on Facebook. So just, you know, <laughs> no, he's just fishing. He's just, he's, I was going to say, he was just trying then, to talk to you. Yeah. He's just trying to talk to me. And he's like, I don't know if you saw my last post and blah, blah. And I just never responded to him, but yeah. So uh, he's going to get blocked here. He messages me one more time. Um, uh, like I yeah, said, sometimes our, you have his, to. his stepson is friends with my son, but, um, he keeps trying to talk to me and he's just going to go bye-bye. So yeah. sometimes you have to do that. Yeah. He's just annoying and, uh, makes my skin crawl. So, um, it's one thing if I talk to you, but I've never tried to communicate with certain people. Certain people just don't sit right with you, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. And he's, he's definitely one of them. I, I have one never, of those. I have yeah. one of those when he gets drunk he gets in his man cave or whatever and he gets drunk and then he'll start messaging me and I yeah. never answer him. Yeah. Yeah. I just, yeah. I'm just like, you know what? I don't need you <laughs> in my world. Right. <laughs> and Facebook's not my real world, by the way. So, you know, which no. is why I allow people to stay, but you know. Yeah. yeah. You know. Just social people, media, no big deal. Correct. Some people make it a big deal. Some people say social media has changed things. Well, I really don't know that. I think that people are people. People have always been the way we are. And I think social media just allows them to show it off some more. <laughs> so it, I think well, it's... exactly. And some people take it way too far sometimes. Damn. It's just not meant for those types of things. 
No. But uh, I'm like you in that sense. I'm not a big social media freak. I don't get on there and start posting left and right and left and right and left and right. I'm, sometimes I'll get on there just for entertainment purposes only just to see what people, you know, have written or where they've been or whatever. But there's people who post, I swear to you, like every minute of their life. They, they do. Like, Calm they down. Do. Like you don't have nothing else to do. Yeah, they do. They do. Um, you know, and I post certain things mostly lately has been the questions for doing this and yeah. trying to get topics that, you know, people are want to and talk about. And that's understandable. And that's understandable. You know. You're getting views from other people. You know, I, I did a, I did a question. I put, what are you passionate about? And I didn't have very many answers. One is uh, dogs, abortion rights, women's rights, organ donation. I could go on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, someone else posted service member rights, charities such as Stop Soldier Su- Suicide, Animal Rights, Human Trafficking. Someone else posted Women's Right, Making Health Care Affordable, Improving the Health of Our Community. Um, <laughs> just trying to generate and see. I don't think I posted on this page, just that one page. Yeah. I've been playing around a little bit, just trying to see, you know, what the hits big, yeah, yeah, what hits big and what doesn't, you know, so. Well, I think like you've said before, um, the relationship thing hits big because I think we all kind of pretty much experience the same things in different ways. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. We all have been through something Definitely. or are going to go through something or thinking about going through something or whatever you're doing, you know, relationships, it's kind of the root of. Yeah. Relationships, relationships, like you said before, they take work, make sure you communicate with each other, try to open up to each other. Um, Sometimes it may be difficult, Um, you know, try your best. There's nothing else you can do. Try your best and try to get where you want to get to. And it's not being selfish and it's not being, you know, self-centered. You're allowed, you're allowed to think and have opinions and be who you want to be. Yeah. Well, and then at some point too, you have to decide what you want for yourself. You cannot put your happiness and well-being in someone else's hands. And because it's easy to stay is not a reason to allow that to happen. So at some point you have to learn when to let go. Right. Yeah. What's better you know, for you? Is it better what's to better for go? you? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, um, what's interesting is when you ask some of these questions on some of these platforms is the people that respond and how honest they are. And some of them you just feel for. Oh, yeah. You know? Definitely. Definitely. You know, because you're not the only one going through it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's I'm a sure huge, there's so many of us. So many. So of many. Us out there. Yes. So it, it's been interesting. It's fun to do. It's like homework. It is. Yeah. You know, it's like homework. So I've enjoyed posting the questions and seeing what I get back, except for the sarcastic snarky guys and they just have to be deleted, but <laughs> <laughs> they just you want know, to put their two cents in, I guess. I don't and, know. and, you know, I do post questions where I don't mind if a guy or girl answers, but sometimes I put ladies for a reason. And so right. if you're a guy and you want to answer some of the other ones, have at it. I'm game. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. But yeah. Was, equal we, equal opportunity. <laughs> right. Well, we do have a few guys that listen. Yes, we do. So, yeah. So yeah, and that's good. We're grateful for them, too. So definitely. We're gr- grateful for it all. We have a good time. We do have a good time. And um, always always have a good time uh it's always great to chat with you and listen to all the the quirky things that people commented about sometimes um and it's a lot of fun and i know sometimes i can be a smart aleck and be opinionated too but aren't we all (laughs) we are yeah (laughs) you know if you're gonna be snarky i'm gonna (laughs) back with a comment yeah well i think that's why like you and i get along so well we're pretty much just what you see is what you get yeah simple 
you know, if you want to ask me something, you want to know something about me, just ask me. I will answer you. I will answer you honestly. Um, doesn't yeah. mean you'll like it. <laughs> but right. it no, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to take offense to it or I'm going to judge you for it either. So no, an answer is an answer. So, yeah. So, you know, yeah. what you see is what you get. I've always pretty much been that way. Um, yeah. And that's, that's, that's it. That's it. Well, thank you guys for listening as always. We hope you continue to listen to us as we bring you our weekly comments and questionnaires from Miss Shar. And I'll go ahead and pass it to you. <laughs> Some people probably think I'm nagging them with the questions. <laughs> it's like, uh, God, it's okay. what is she just, looking for? Just, just freaking answer them, okay? <laughs> thank you. Go ahead. <laughs> right? Just participate. <laughs> Don't ask me why. Just participate. Exactly. That's it. <laughs> I'm the one asking the questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't get to ask me back why. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you can find us on Spotify, Amazon, Samsung, Podcast, Podcast Index, Listen Notes, Apple Podcasts, Google, Pandora, TuneIn, iHeart, and Deezer. All those platforms. Listen to us. Do it now. And the one lady that... Now. The one lady that had the comment about, you know, she feels because she doesn't contribute monetary. Yeah. I don't know her name, but hello. Yes. I appreciate your comment. She did find us online. She was looking for it. And she, did she? she did. That's and I hope cool. she's listening. Uh, nice meeting you. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> yes, welcome. Same here. Yeah. And everything we ask, it's just, you know, we put in our two cents and we're honest about it and we're not nitpicking and we all do the best we can for ourselves. Yes, absolutely. And like uh, like we said in our initial statement, um, you know, we're not here to judge anyone. Uh, we're here just to comment, have a good time, um, compare notes. Um, and see what we have in common and share our stories and maybe you can yeah. learn something from it and it'll help you and maybe not absolutely yeah maybe you think don't do that <laughs> yeah right <laughs> maybe that's what you learn i don't know yeah. exactly <laughs> yeah so yeah so it's just really kind of bouncing back and forth and sharing our journey yes definitely so thanks guys we appreciate you happy new year everyone happy new year be healthy. Yes. And have a great 2024. Good night, my dear friend. Good night, dear. It's morning time now. It's, what is it? Oh, it's 1232. We're done. Yeah, not than, bad. We did good. Uh, we, did good. we did good. We did good. I'm going to call you on the other device. All right. Sounds good. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.